Welcome to SysEng Quick. My name is John, and today I'll show you how to build your first Ansible playbook. In the last episode, we set up a dev container to follow along with these tutorials, and that's what I recommend you use to follow along. Let's go ahead and get that working. We can go ahead and clone the repo, so I'll do git clone, and I will copy the URL from my browser. Now that we've cloned it, I'll go into that directory, and then I'll reopen this in workspace in VS Code with code.-r. If you have the dev containers extension installed, it will automatically pop up and offer to reopen in the container. If you don't, make sure you have dev containers installed in your extensions. You'll also need to make sure you have Docker. If the pop-up went away before you open it in the container, simply bring up the command palette and say dev containers reopen in container. The first time you build the container, it may take a minute to install everything. We'll know that it's done once we have some extra icons on the left side of our bar. These will be for the Ansible extension and a couple other things I installed in the dev container environment. There we go. Everything looks good now. Let's just make sure everything is working. If I type Python 3-V, yes, we have Python. If I type Ansible dash dash version, it should tell me we have version 2.16. Yes, everything looks good. We should be able to run Ansible commands now. If you're not using the dev container, you'll have to set things up on your own. The first video in this series showed how to install Ansible Core, although you'll get the most benefits by using VS Code and the extensions. And from this point forward, I'm going to assume you are using the dev container. You can see from my poetry configuration, we've installed Ansible Core version 2.16.6 and Ansible Lint 24.2.2. .2. And we're running Python 3.12. So if you have a virtual environment with all of those things, you should be able to follow along. I'm also using the Ansible extension in VS Code. It's very handy for doing development with Ansible. In the first video, we used Ansible from the command line to run the ping module against localhost. That proved Ansible was working. And this is the essence of playbooks. A playbook is a YAML file consisting of plays. Those plays consist of tasks you want to run on a specific host or group of hosts. Right now, we only have localhost, so we'll run our plays against localhost. But we'll see how to make additional hosts later on. So, why don't we turn this Ansible ping module into a playbook? First, we'll need to make a file for the playbook. I've configured VS Code to treat .yml files as Ansible files automatically. This will tell the Ansible extension to automatically lint them for us. So let's make a new file called ping.yml. Here is our playbook, and our playbook consists of a list of plays. In YAML, a list needs a dash to signify that it's a list member. So the first thing we need to do is name our play. This isn't actually required, but Ansible lint does complain if you don't name your play. So I'm going to say this is the ping play. Next, we need to tell it where to run our plays. Right now, all we have is localhost. So I'm going to say host our localhost. Typically, whenever Ansible connects to a remote host, it's going to gather a bunch of facts about that host. This is really useful at times, but it can be slow. So if you don't need them, it's best to disable that. So I'm going to say gather facts false. The last thing we're going to add is our list of tasks. So let's say task, and then again, we're going to have a list. So I'll indent that and put a dash. You don't have to indent YAML arrays, but I think it looks weird if you don't, so that's my preferred style. But any valid YAML style you want to use should be fine. So again, we're going to name this task, and I'm going to say ping host. Now, to use a module, we have to give it the module name. The module name was ping. Any built-in module is from the ansible.built-in collection. An ansible collection is a group of things you can use in ansible. 
We'll talk about collections more in the future. But for now, all you need to know is that whenever you're using a built-in component of Ansible, like the ping module, you will do ansible.builtin and then the module name. In this case, ping. We'll do colon because this is a dictionary. Now, we didn't pass any arguments to ping, and we don't have to do that here either. So this is a valid playbook with a single play. Let's go ahead and save this file. And you can see that Ansible Lint is processing our files. If we had had any problems, it would have told us in our problem section. But this is valid YAML and a valid Ansible playbook. So let's see if we can run that. To do that from the command line, we're going to run ansible-playbook ping.yml, the name of the playbook file. And when we do that, we'll see that we ran it against the local host. So here we go. We ran the play, the ping play, that's named from here, and then we ran the task, ping host, and we got the OK response. It didn't give us a Pong response. It just gave us OK. It's hiding most of the output by default. If you want it to be more verbose, we can add a dash V flag. And when we do that, we'll see we got changed and ping pong, just as we had up here. The command line is a bit more verbose than most of the plays, but most of the time you won't need this additional information. To follow along from the exact point in the video where I started from, I've made some tags in the repo. This one is lesson three. So if you download this repo and find the ping playbook already exists, but you want to start from scratch, simply do git checkout lesson three, and you'll have no ping playbook, and you can start from the beginning. And that covers writing your first Ansible playbook. I hope that this has been helpful. If it has, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Come back and see the next video where we'll do something more. Thanks for watching. See you then.